Why a 17-year-old boy is in a relationship with a 15-year-old girl is totally unacceptable. I know you hear my mother's cry. Can you hear mine? I got money on my mind. Tired of the grind. Out here trying to get mine. Lord, I know you hear my mother's cry. Can you hear mine? Uh. Hello and welcome back. It's your girl, Yazi Yaza. Uh, the the reason why my demeanor is not like how it usually is is I was on my way to an event that I'm hosting but I had to speak on this issue not for the fact of what's happened but what it actually represents first things first I want to say uh, rest in peace to Eliana I'm sending love and light to her family I'm keeping them in their in my prayers it hurts me when I see things like this. It hurts me so much. There's so many layers and things to unpack. And that's what I wanted to do this episode about. It's unpacking how do we as a community stop this from happening. Uh, one of the worst things a parent can ex experience is to bury their child. No parent should ever have to experience such a thing. And it's unfortunate that on Wednesday morning, this happened in broad daylight that a young woman, 15 years old, young girl, really, at 15 years old has lost her life to a senseless crime. In case you didn't know, in an area in London, it's called Croydon, it's just outside of London, South London to be specific. Uh, Wednesday morning, a 17-year-old boy, and that would be me putting it in nice terms, to me he's a monster, uh, made an attempt to get back with his ex-girlfriend who... I want to assume is the same age as her classmate, which is 15 years of age. Uh, he brought a bouquet of flowers and when she refused his advances and said she no longer wanted to be in a relationship with him, he decided to attack her friend who came to defend her by stabbing her twice. Once in the neck, the other one in the chest. Uh, if I didn't do it before, I will do it when I'm editing this episode to say trigger warning because we are going to talk about some things that can some people will find visually disturbing. The first thing that I want to unpack from this whole situation is the fact that a lot of young men, young boys, might not know it, but I'm just going to say it straight up. I don't know if schools are still teaching citizenship as a subject. The age of consent in England, I don't know about the UK, but in England is 17 years of age. Why a 17-year-old boy is in a relationship with a 15-year-old girl is totally unacceptable. That right there, as, as soon as any kind of school or local authorities or anybody knows about this, these boys need to be educated that you have no business from the age of 17 upwards to be in a relationship with anyone under that age. It is morally wrong. I remember leaving secondary school, you would see boys in college sixth form college on their way to university or university age pulling up in cars in front of the school teachers will see young girls go in the car we need to stop letting this happen caregivers anybody within that remit we need to stop allowing people that we know that aren't parents or legal guardians just pull up in front of schools to interact with young girls protect our young girls Protect us. Protect them. Women, young girls need to be protected. There's only so much we can do. Two young girls were left to their own devices to protect themselves against this boy who's carrying a sword. It, it was described as a foot-long weapon. We need to knuckle down on knife crime. We need to knuckle down on gun crime. Not only in the UK, not only in the capital, worldwide. These children were going to school. And I'm sure they didn't or their families would never in a million years think that this could happen. The fact that he might have explained to the authorities that, oh, I came to just get back with my girlfriend with a bouquet of flowers. But in the same breath, you have a weapon on you. That's premeditated. And I hope he gets the full extension of the law thrown at him. Make an example. I don't care. Anyone, if you know anyone that carries a weapon, 
I don't care. People are calling it snitching, whatever. We will only grow as a community, grow as a society as a whole when we debunk everything about this whole snitching type of thing. This stig- this stigma of being a snitch or a snake or a grass or a rat. Is it worth more of our babies? going into the ground is it worth more than our youth having to suffer not feeling safe before people would tell you yeah as long as you're in the right place you won't face any issues how much more of a right place could you be than making your way to school one of the words that they used to describe eliana was a bright young woman young girl i need to remember that this is a a 15 year old girl that's been killed they described her as someone with a bright future set to take her GCSEs. Her life hasn't even started. All the things that she was lined up to do and for what? For what that, that boy would describe as a lover's tiff. I want to know where he's come from, where his base is, how he was raised. Is he from a two-part, a two-parent household, one-parent household, who is responsible for raising such angry boys this isn't the first incident of rejection that's happening there was a woman in america who rejected the advances of a man he decided to brick her in the face the whole side of her face swollen society tells women all the time oh don't lead a man on let him know clearly you don't want to look like a tease But when you reject a man, you don't know if he's going to attack you. That's the issue. No matter what you do, you cannot control somebody else's action. We need to go to the root of the problem. We need to figure out what the heck is going on. Why would a 17-year-old boy in his mind, first of all, has no business being in a relationship with a 15-year-old girl? That is a problem that we need to address. There is a lot of underage, illegal relationships going on what's the point of putting all these ages down of consent and things like that if no one's abiding by it who is the person that actually instills that these things aren't happening that young girls aren't being groomed and manipulated by older boys like i said i was in secondary school boys are rolling up in cars picking up girls talking to girls teachers are there not telling them excuse me if you're not a student here or picking up a child move on jog on firmly a lot of teachers there'll be a thing of as soon as the students left the front gate none of my business safeguarding i want to know what's happening with the fact that there are a lot of men grown men and a lot of boys that have not been taught how to take rejection in their stride someone says no i'm not interested learn to move on if any say if anything say thank you for letting me know from earlier i appreciate your honesty have a nice life that's it people are getting faced with rejection no let me be specific young men boys and even grown men are being faced with rejection and thinking it's appropriate to cuss a woman out you'll hear men on the street when you don't want to give your phone number to them, say, F you, you're ugly anyway. That's aggressive. That's, that can be seen as a form of assault if we're going to talk about it legally. You've got men pressuring women at all hours of the night and day for your number. They've now got a technique where if you give a guy your number, he calls you right in front of your face. That's intimidation. If you're somebody that takes somebody's number... And calls them to see if the number is real. That's wrong. Stop doing that. I'm going to say it again. If you are somebody that when you approach a woman and you ask for a number, she gives you her number and you call her in front of her face. That is a a form of intimidation. Stop doing that. Because it can lead to what this situation that happened on Wednesday could be. Where you actually actively start to. Uh, kill abuse assault anybody in any shape or form stop doing that stop intimidating women stop being aggressive with women and girls when they are telling you from early that they are not interested 
it's not about oh uh, what did the girl do what did the woman do we need to start educating and raising actually raising boys that become men in our society because these are the same men that become lawmakers that become members of parliament and if they don't understand or sympathize what it is to be a woman we're not going to see changes in our society because it's becoming more situations are coming up where women are rejecting the advances of a man sometimes you see it on tiktok where girls are like in a humorous manner oh um, I rejected this guy look at all the voice notes he's sending me he's cussing the girl out on dating apps there's women on dating apps that men are slandering them through voice notes just because they don't want to go on a date let alone being in a relationship with someone there are women to this day who are in abusive relationships they've been wanting to leave they don't even know how to leave because they're afraid of what the guy would do sometimes it's even safer for them to stay in said abusive relationship than to leave because they threat for their lives this is a real thing that's going on and we need to really double down on this domestic violence assault of any kind knife crime gun crime we need to knuckle down as a community we need to knuckle down as a government we need to knuckle down as a country this isn't an issue that only women go through when they're in a relationship with a man a 15 year old girl has lost her life I don't think you understand this this was the friend Eliana is the friend that was even defending her friend that was once in a relationship with this 17 year old boy we have to ask ourselves why did she even want to break up with him in the first place she probably saw some things she probably identified some red flags and thought, mm, no, this isn't for me. I've seen something here that I don't like what it's becoming. And maybe at the time when she came to her final decision, she was threatened or she feared for her life. Hence why she said, I didn't want to be in this relationship. This boy must have had to track her down. Wednesday morning on the way to school. This is someone that's tracked somebody down. There's a level of psychotic behaviour that we're witnessing. The same kid that you see stamping their foot. You can say, oh, yes, you're going to the extreme. It's not that deep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it that far. The same boys that you see in the supermarket stamping their foot when mommy says, no, you can't get that. They're stamping, they're screaming, they're making a tantrum. Sometimes I've seen them punching the mum's leg. Obviously, they're small. The mum's not going to feel it. It's the same aggressive boys that join gangs or go into kind of uh, some kind of theft or assault or abuse or end up being abusive partners. These early signs, we need to start stopping it from early. Eradicate the term boys will be boys. So these boys become accountable men. Stop saying boys will be boys. Stop allowing aggressive behavior. Stop saying that, oh, this guy is feminine because he's soft spoken and he doesn't get loud and he doesn't hit and he's not passive aggressive. Stop defining what masculinity is and just raise human beings in our society. If you're not firm and aggressive, you're not masculine. You're feminine if you let a woman walk over you. If you're kind and polite and soft spoken, what is what is going on with society make up your minds do you want to be living amongst human beings or do you want to live amongst animals it's one or two things we've seen an example of living amongst an animal i don't want that for myself if i know even if i know a young boy personally that is in a relationship with a girl he has no legally should not be and i'm going to tell him one foot out of line you'll be put on the sex offenders list. That's, that's just the fact of it. When people are saying, oh, you know, he's aggressive, but he's never hit me and he'll never hit me, he's still aggressive. No one knows what happens when they snap. They only know it when they actually snap. That, that's just the fact of it all. No one knows that. So you saying, oh, this person's passive aggressive. If you know a young man or you're raising a young boy and he's even passive aggressive, shut that down from early. Shut it down from the root. 
You tell him something that doesn't go his way. He's walked out the room and slammed the door. You tell him, come back. You're not slamming doors. If he raises his voice, uh-uh, no, 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 no. We, we don't do that. Human beings don't function like that. If you don't get what you want, don't get ugly. A lot of people, when they don't get what they want out of life, they turn very ugly. And that's very telling to who they are as a person. Stop saying boys will be boys. I don't know. I, I hope that a tragic incident like this, it tells people to wake up. You know, our parents have come from communities where if an aunt and uncle saw you acting up, they will take it upon themselves like they're a parent to say, what are you doing there? Stop that. I know your mum or dad didn't raise you like that. Nowadays, we're living in a community where everyone's turning a blind eye. Oh, it's not my problem. Not my kid. We are all in this. We're all here together, whether we like it or not. We are neighbours. Even if you've never even said so much as a good morning to your neighbour, we are all neighbours. And if something happens to one of us, it affects all of us. If you've got a child that went to the same school as that girl, you're going to feel some type of way. If you have a child that goes to school in South East London or London, you're going to feel some type of way because it could happen to anybody's kid. Don't try and criticise the situation. Well, my kid's a bit different or they're not doing this, da, 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 or it was in this area, couldn't happen there. I'm seeing comments online going, yeah, this is why I moved out of London. Uh, London's no place to raise a child. <laughs> Let me tell you something about violence, yeah? I'm born and raised in South East London. I've seen violence. I've experienced violence. It's only by God's grace that I'm still here to tell you something today. But the fact of the matter is, violence, crime is not exclusive to any one group or any one person. It can happen to anybody. Because anybody that's had a crime made against them or committed a crime, because I know people from both ends of the spectrum, no one plans for it. All you can do is navigate through it the best you can. There's people that have been criminals today and have changed their life. And then there's some people that are just run to the core. There are people that will say to you, well, you know, my experience living in South East London or my experience living in South West London in comparison to South East London is very different. When it comes to crime across the board, it's not exclusive to anybody. That's why I say that we need to take care of each other. If you know someone that's carrying a weapon, if you know someone that knows someone that's doing foolishness, dead all that snitching, snaking, grassing, talk dead it dead it because we're all living in the same city you may have children you may not have children but you have somebody you got a brother a sister a niece nephew everybody's got somebody and we all have to take care of each other indirectly most of the time directly doesn't have to be someone you're close with taking care of each other indirectly is making sure that in your own household you're not raising people that can do such a thing that's why I'm upset to know where is this boy coming from okay we can say it's a, it's based on your environment and that's how you become the same the type of person you become I'm from South East London just because I'm from South East London it doesn't mean I want to commit crimes and do nothing with my life it's because of the base I've come from the household I've come from can never allow me to do that so that's why I'm asking Please, 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 if you are going to give birth to people in this world and bring them amongst others in our society, if you're going to give birth to people, then make an effort to raise them properly. Because if your, you, your child is a nuisance in your household, they become a devil in our community. I'm, I'm so, so upset, man. I got young people that are the same age, 15 years old. And it's not even about age. No one deserves to lose their life. 
No one deserves it. But we really, really need to start holding people accountable. I remember in secondary school, and there's certain traits, you can see it when it's when it's occurring, yeah? I know a boy that used to come to school, he had nothing but pliers in his backpack. Never seen him with a book. He'd have the same pliers in his backpack because he used to lock off the chains on people's bikes and steal the bikes. He was doing everything you can imagine. This is even before he was even 18. We're talking secondary school. From the age of 11, he was stealing. No morals, no values, nothing. His parents never used to come in for parents' evening. Never picked, he was never picked up after school. Uh, had no interest in any kind of after school activities. I'm not judging anyone, but I'm saying there's a pattern to people that are going to be useful to our community. And there's a pattern of people that are going to be a nuisance. We can't afford any more deaths. We can't afford losing any more bright minds that would have contributed to society in a positive way. Please, I'm asking you. Yeah? I'm asking this on, on, a, on a real, real deep request. If you've got children... Be a parent. Raise your child properly. If you're a teacher, educate the children, boys and girls, on what's right or wrong. If you have any standing on being someone that delivers morality in our society, deliver it with chest. Don't hold back. Don't be shy. All I can say is, Eliana... I pray that this incident sparks a change in our society. To the boy that committed this crime, I pray that the full letter of the law is put on you and everything that you deserve. Because you know, Belle, to the parents of the boy... Your souls and you know what you did. You know what you raised. And to everyone that watches Hasis and listens to Hasis, if you know someone personally that is committing crimes, I don't care if it's shoplifting at the local corner shop. Talk to them, sit them down, tell them that this can be the gateway to a lot of other foolishness. Because theft, yeah? Yeah? Doing theft and committing small crimes can later on become big crimes. So speak to them. No issue's too small to start addressing and keeping it real. So let's start talking to people in worst case scenarios. Worst case scenario, this can happen X, Y, Z. Is that what you want for your life? That's it. Um, all I can say is thank you for listening. I hope that we can take this message away and what's happened to spark small changes to create a bigger change in our society. I'm not someone with any kind of, you know, miraculous power to make a change in society. I'm more or less a social commentator. I'm using my platform to bring awareness to the situation. And if you are part of any kind of initiative or charity or group, that also tackle situations to avoid these type of things happening, please feel free to send me an email, a DM, anything of that nature. And let's just keep talking about it. Education, real and open conversations and growth should be the aim in our society. Healing, therapy. You've been watching another episode or listening to another episode of hey sis please stay safe please stay vigilant to any young women out there or girls don't let this situation put you off if you are in a relationship you're spotting red flags an inkling of aggressiveness passive aggressiveness address it or leave nothing is normal about aggression nothing is normal about abuse 
nothing is normal about you maybe from time to time fearing for your safety in any kind of immediate situation if you are in a relationship with someone and they are charging at you and you've even got just the smallest inclination of fear address it let it never happen again or leave this is it um please just be safe out there thank you it's been your girl yes yes uh I got money on my mind, tired of the grind, out here trying to get mine, Lord, I know you hear my mother's cry, can you hear mine, I got money on my mind, tired of the grind, out here trying to get mine, Lord, I know you hear my mother's cry, can you hear mine, uh. boss chick all about my boss shit, Come on. moving drunk if you think I really lost this, if